Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. It's 7.50 a.m., February 20th. Prices of BTC currently at 95.82. So a lot has happened since yesterday, folks. Um, almost a $1,000 drop, right? Um, so let's, let's break that down. But before we do that, let's pay some bills, all right? First things first, again, we are offering our paid advantage membership right here on the Cryptosomniac website. If you go to cryptosomniac.com, hit the products page right there, this tab right here, and then buy the advantage subscription, all right? And the bot will let you in and give you access to all these channels, okay? Every single one of these channels that you see a lock on is what you get access to, okay? And here are the breakdown of the channels, okay? So first things first, the video that you are watching right now free on YouTube is just one of the videos that you will get as an advantage member. Okay. And I don't do these uh, free videos every day for the free side. Right. Um, typically my content, my majority of my content is dedicated for my paid side members. Okay. So we have these BTC analysis every morning and evening. So two video updates a day, plus written um, analysis through the day, okay? So you can see right here, whether it's evening time or morning time, if I see something happening in the market that I need to talk about, I will post the update right there in the Bitcoin analysis channel. And I let people know exactly how I am positioning myself to see how the market is doing, right? Um, and you could see, I mean, again, you know, a lot of this information is very, very helpful in understanding how you can position yourself in the market, what you could potentially buy or sell or long or short. Um, this is my particular take and insight on the market, all right? And everything gets posted in the Bitcoin analysis channel, okay? And then we also have the uh, spot buy channels where over here, if you are interested in positions, let's just say with the US dollar, or the USDC coins uh, without leverage trades. Uh, these are the channels, short, medium, and long-term. Long-term meaning that we wanna hold these for uh, months, maybe a year or so. Medium-term meaning we wanna hold them for a few weeks or maybe a few months. And then short-term meaning we just wanna hold these for a couple of days, maybe you know at most a couple of weeks, okay? And then we have the uh, STO I IEO chats um, where you could discuss you know upcoming um, launches of ICOs or IEO coins. Uh, we also have strictly dedicated channels for leverage trading. If you're into that, if you know how to trade or if you don't know how to trade, we can also show you, okay? And that is where, this is where a majority of our time goes because the leverage market right now is really hot in crypto, especially Bitcoin, okay? And our predominant focus is in Bitcoin, okay? So you can see we have a four different channels right here for Bitcoin, um, the, the swing trades, which are lower leverage, you know, multi-week, multi-month trades potentially. These are a scalp um, high leverage trades where you're trying to get in and out of the market, maybe less than an hour, less than 15, 20 minutes. And these are typically your day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, week-to-week trades right here, the leverage short or the leverage long, all right? And then members can also pay, paste their trades right here you know, people who are going short or long, if they're buying something or selling something, um, these are the places where you can post your trades. And so people could ask you questions why you did this, why you did that. Um, so you can see there's a ton of information, ton of content that you can keep yourself busy in this community, right? We are not like the other communities where you have maybe one conversation a day or one update a day from um, the, the people who are running the channel. Okay, we have, you know, over 80 people from 14 different countries, and they all actually talk and chime into these channels right here, which are the group chat communities. You can see everyone is up and about, whether it's morning, evening, night, um, any part of the day. I mean, there's so many people uh, usually chatting up a storm about what's happening in price, what to do, what not to do. Um, so it gives you really unique insight on what others are thinking. Um, people who may have also been doing this for a little while, okay? And then finally, we have, if you're interested in the equities channels, uh, we just opened this up last month fully, uh, equities announcements where you will get uh, market updates, whether it's uh, for the opening bell, um, closing midday updates on how the stock market is doing, the U.S. stock market, which sectors are hot, 
uh, what's going on, you know, um, for the rest of the week, any announcements, any interest rate hikes, et cetera. Okay. So all that stuff you get right there. And then you can also have, you know, talks within the stock market channel if you have questions. Okay. And here's where you can discuss the U S stock market. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to understand a particular stock, you can ask those questions here. Okay, so this is all what you get with the advantage side, folks. Um, a ton of information, a ton of awesome people from all you know, various degrees of background. Um, so go to the Cryptosomniac website, folks, as you can see, products page and get the advantage membership. Okay, all right, so let's get to the analysis. Okay, what we've seen so far okay again is after this drop um price is really just kind of you know creating this pennant this this bear flag right here on the one hour okay Let, let's make this a little bit more clearly right here okay um that there's really nothing else that i can do other than draw this like a pennant let me get rid of this uh alert first okay so let's draw it out right so we have a clean chart here so we have something like this happening and maybe even something like potentially like that right that's really the confines of this pennant right now um ignoring you know this this wick right here okay uh the wick for the most part is i mean obviously you know big seller stepped in out of nowhere so uh, i don't you know foresee this being part of this pennant we need to pay attention to this part right here okay now the interesting thing about pennants that i will tell you from my experience is Penance, bear penance, okay, if they're facing up like this, they have a higher degree of falling to the downside, okay? When penance are facing down like this, okay, they, they have a higher degree of breaking to the upside. And again, doesn't mean that the upside is going to be straight up here. It just means that if we start knocking out, you know, say fib retracements, say from that top to this bottom, we can make it back up to maybe the 50 fit, which is around 97, 95, or the golden pocket around here, around, let's just say, you know, 99, 30 to about 10,000, okay? That particular area could still keep this downtrend intact if it's going to head back down again, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you my take, okay? And this is where things get really interesting, all right? So let's go to XO charts, all right? Um, we'll go to XO and we'll check out something that's really interesting okay so first things first okay i'm going to check out the daily i'm going to explain to you guys uh here's the daily candle from yesterday okay so we had about 4.1 billion contracts exchanged 196 million dollars in negative delta so a pretty strong candle okay um it's not you know a weak candle by any means uh, now, especially if we start going back down into the four hour, this is where things also get interesting. This was one of the strongest four hour candles right here. Negative 222 million contracts in this particular swing of the candle. Okay, this candle right here that you're seeing the red one. So what does that mean, right? Um, what that means is, okay, there was a lot of people uh, who got shaken out in this particular candle. All right, whether it was shorts closing out their positions or whether it was longs who were trapped, they had their stops hit um, over and over all through this candle, right? Majority of people, and we can turn this on too, this rec, the thing right here, all these green and red bubbles you see are short and long liquidations or closings, okay? That's what these bubbles mean right here. All right, so when we look at this candle right here, we know for the most part that both the longs and the shorts, um, a lot of the players have actually been kicked out of the market already, okay? So where does that leave us, all right? So let's dig in to this candle right here. And actually, let's dial down a little bit on the one hour, okay? So first, we wanna uh, get to this candle right here, all right? right up here and I'm gonna show you a very unique trick okay so what we're doing right now folks is we are dissecting this particular candle you see this big um, long-legged um, doji candle right here okay kind of like a shooting star or I guess it's really just doji um, this candle we're gonna dissect and I'm gonna show you exactly how you break down a candle and understanding who's trapped where all right so 
that's that candle right here, okay? The one I just showed you, the long doji. Now, once you look closer to the top of the candle, okay? Look closer to the top of the candle all the way up here, all right? Guess what happened way up here and all through this movement? All the way from, you know, uh, 10,250 all the way up here. You see this green side right here? These are all buyers, okay? These are all buyers. All these buyers, okay? They either market bought, I mean, more than likely these are market buys, okay? And then what did price do? It came down, right? And then price never got back to the high right there. And then what did price do? It went lower and lower and then boom, right there, that drop. That, my friends, is this right here. All these people who are trapped, who probably had their stops sitting, maybe below this area right here. So they probably had their stop sitting below this area right here. Or at the very most, they probably had the guts to hold all the way through here, but they said, you know what? I'm not gonna hold any more lower. I'm gonna place my stop right there. And if I get you know pushed out of the market, then I get pushed out. Or they may have just market sold somewhere in the middle of this candle, okay? So this was a perfect, perfect trap, a, a bearish SFP late as a trap where buyers got a bit too aggressive, right? You can see millions of dollars. You can see 9.5 million, 6.4, 4.7, 6.3, 6 million, all the way up here. If you start adding these up, this is you know multi-million dollar uh, movement right here. And all that movement right here was trapped because price never made it back up here. Rather what price did was it came down and down and boom, right there. So this, is the perfect trap right here. This candle right here is the perfect trap to trap people who got caught up here, trap people who got caught up here holding, right? And then it took them out of the market, all right? Not only did it did do that, okay? That accelerated the drop so much so that you saw the price cascading all the way down, taking out each one of these individual levels, okay? So we saw that whoever was probably trying to buy the weekly open, right? This retest right here, those people got stopped out. Whoever was trying to buy this retest right here around 99.29, those people got stopped out. And even this um, retest right here that we did not have around 98.40, those people got stopped out, okay? Because for the most part, this candle sliced through everyone. And then also more importantly, it stopped out everyone who went long here because more than likely they had their stops right there or right there or right there right and this candle sliced through everyone so this was by far the perfect candle that was laid out to trap both sides now so far we've talked about the long side that got trapped right now, let me explain to you how the short side got trapped okay so first things first partially um the short side was a trap other part of it was really just the shorts kind of getting this you know big beautiful candle right here and they had no idea how long to hold this for so the shorts probably close right there, right there, maybe even right there, all right? Um, and that's where you see these bubbles right here, okay? If you start looking in this candle right here, this one hour, that's where you see the red and green bubbles. Typically, when you have uh, this kind of red candle to the downside, you probably see red bubbles because these are long liquidations, okay? But when you see green bubbles with it, that means that, well, it looks like there's a lot of shorts closed as well, okay? So what that tells us is people did not anticipate those that were shorting this kind of red candle. So they probably, if they shorted here, they probably had their profit, take profit right there, maybe right there, maybe even right there. And that's why you see those green and red bubbles, okay? Now let's talk about another thing, all right? So we have the big anatomy of this candle right here with a big wick to the downside, okay? Now here are where sellers are trapped, way down here. Anything inside this wick right here are aggressive, aggressive sellers who thought that this candle was just going to kind of just keep slicing down. And so those people are trapped because price is now, let's just say from here all the way up, price is now almost $200 above where they shorted. So unless price somehow comes down to that area and those people uh, sort of get uh, relief from closing out their short positions, they are underwater. So what does that mean? If they're underwater, 
majority of the longs have closed out. Um, majority of the shorts from up here closed out. What does that mean? That means a majority of the participants in this market, in this whole structure that you see, are weeded out of the market or they're just sitting on the side with no idea what to do. And what does that create? It creates a big vacuum for price to do its own thing, right? So meaning that price could now go like this and start just heading back up. They can use the fuel from these shorts right here who, tr who are trapped and just keep moving price up and up and up. And these people will be forced to liquidate their positions, forced to be able to stop out um, or forced to cover their shorts and add to the long fuel. Okay, so I'm not saying that price has to go back up. I'm saying that this actually creates a perfect storm because you know no one has the cojones to, to actually long this thing where we are right now because we just saw a thousand dollar drop, right? Definitely no one has a um, cojones to, to short this thing either because if you're shorting this thing, you have no real you know, proper stop unless it's maybe up here or at best it's up here, you know, and especially after you drop a thousand dollars, I mean, what are the chances you're going to drop, you know, another few hundred or a thousand again, right? So it creates like the, the perfect store and the psychological test for both longs and shorts in, you know, them becoming very uncertain of the price. And this is where a majority of the people sit on the sidelines. Okay. Now this is where, you know, our insight and analysis comes in, right? Now, for the most part, I've said this over and over again, right? Number one, this blue box right here is still holding. We have yet to close a candle below this red box, or I'm sorry, below this blue box, okay? Why is that blue box so important? Again, this level right here stretches back from way over here in June 2019. It was previous resistance right there. It was support, support right there, support right there, support, resistance right there resistance right there now is turning into support even though we had such a violent drop right we have still not closed the candle below this blue box so the chances of this turning around are still alive they're not as high as they were say you know two days ago when we saw this big green candle but the chances are still there okay so any person that's telling you that we have to go down from here all right is, is falsely lying i mean it's just not true because there's no technical data that's telling you we have to go down. Price never has to do anything. Okay. Uh, there's many ways to trap buyers and long uh, buyers and sellers. There's many ways to get a majority of participants trapped on either side. And I would probably figure that this is probably the best way to do that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, blast this candle back up towards 10, five or 11,000. That's again, you know, if, if, the market was to cause a maximum amount of pain. I would figure this would be the way to do it. Weed out, you know, say the degenerate longs that have been perpetually just longing this thing. Um, and it weeded out all the people who longed over the past three, four, five days, right? It definitely got stopped out, right? So for the most part, um, unless this blue area starts to break, uh, I don't see any reason why we should be aggressively longing. Uh, aggressively shorting, I mean, and if we do start to short, right, we can start aiming for a couple levels. Okay, so let's look at it, right? So if we're saying that this is the top right here, where will we uh, be aiming for? Well, first level, I'd probably aim for this 382 fib right here, right? That's around um, $8,900. And if I turn on this 200 moving average, guess what else is right around there? Around the 382 fib is that 200 moving average, okay? So if we start breaking this down, I mean, that's another $600 drop that I'd be targeting, right? Um, so I don't mind going short right there. Now, if it's supposed to retrace deeper, we might target this golden pocket right here around $7,800, $7,900. And I'd be pretty happy with that, okay? If we come down, you know, say start breaking down 9.5, we'll probably do something like this. Okay, we'll probably do something like this, test this as resistance, and then start selling off maybe down here, okay? Um, it's probably going to take a little while, I would say, maybe you know a few weeks. I don't think it's just going to be like a, a straight slice through like this. Um, I think it's going to take a little while. But those are the levels that we should be looking for. Okay, eighty nine hundred, and I'd probably look for about eight thousand dollars. Okay. Um, 
let's see here. If we start looking at the daily pivot, right? The daily pivot is also right around uh, about $8,600 as well. So if you're someone who trades pivots, that is another area that you could be targeting, okay? Let's see here. Um, uh, for the most part, um, I know that the Stoke RSI, okay, has bottomed right here on the daily, all right? And it's trying to flip back around, but it hasn't quite done so successfully, okay? But every time the Stoke RSI, as I pointed out right here, uh, right here, and even right here, every time the Stoke RSI has bottomed, we've actually seen good movement to the upside, okay? So there's no guarantee that this thing, you know, has to break down, okay? Uh, it, it's done a decent amount of, you know, damage already. Um, I would probably say that the best way to sort of move this price is probably to the upside. But again, you know, I'm, I'm simply just going to wait it out in the market um, and I'll see exactly what to do. I'll let my advantage members know which way I'm positioned. Uh, but for the most part, you know, if I'm going to short, let me at least get another bounce opportunity up here or something around $9,825, $9,900, and then short this thing all the way down, okay? I'm not going to short right here after we've already dropped $1,000 unless I start seeing the daily um, start showing weakness. Like, you know, each one of the next consecutive candles closes lower and lower and lower. Then I'd probably be more interested in shorting. Until then, um, I'm still long biased unless this blue area right here starts to break, okay? Um, let's see. You could see on uh, XO right here, really not a whole lot of buyers, at least their, their bids are not there yet. Um, but the sellers are stacked, you know, they're stacked at 9,700, they're stacked at 9,750, 9,800, um, all the way up to about 99 uh, or 10,000, I guess. Okay. So the sellers are definitely stacked, right? So that means that, I mean, the sellers are out in full force. They need to get out of their position because if they longed here or here or here, they want to be able to get out of the market um, at a better price, okay? Um, let's see. As per XO, I don't see anything else going on on XO. Um, I mean, obviously, the CVD, the cumulative volume delta, has really, really aggressively stepped up. Um, over here, what you really want to see for a turnaround is this negative delta right here. You want to see that start dropping uh, and you want to see the uh, positive delta start picking up, okay? I don't see that yet. Um, so we'll, we'll see, you know, exactly when buyers actually step up to the plate or the sellers are getting exhausted. We'll, we'll see how that works, okay? But that's it, folks. Um, again, come join the CryptoSomnia community. Like I said, get all this, you know, valuable information and knowledge um, that we can you know, share with you and also a massive education section. Okay. So I hope you guys come join, um, cryptosomniac.com and I'll catch y'all soon. All right. Take care. Cheers.